Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager, here once again with another video on Stargirl Season 2, and this is going to be my trailer breakdown for Episode 9 for this season, otherwise entitled Summer School Chapter 9, like usual. But of course, before we talk about everything, let's actually watch this trailer. This storm, he's getting stronger. Nowhere safe. I will haunt you and your family forever. Everyone in this house is going to die. So last episode was obviously a big episode for both our men or Rick Tyler and of course Dr. Midnight aka Beth Chapel. Mainly for Beth she had a lot of progression and she pretty much ended the episode taking a bit of a W but for Rick it's the opposite. He's uh, taken on Grundy who was actually his uncle thanks to Eclipso fear visions and everything like that and uh, now he's found himself in prison. So let's see where that picks up. But, you know, Beth's got the upper hand. She knows that those goggles protect her from Eclipso sort of vision things. She can stay in control if she wears them. So that's a plus and an advantage. But at the end of the episode, we do see Barbara and Mike sort of consoling each other and supporting each other and just sort of everything like that. But we see the window outside of her house frosting over as well as some icicles taking shape. So, uh something's coming. But of course, before we get into the actual breakdown of the trailer and all the other promo, uh, promo material that comes along with it, we will quickly read out the synopsis or description for the episode as it does give us uh, a lot more context to the episode than the trailer does provide. But of course, throughout the video, be sure to let me know in the comments section down below your various thoughts, opinions, theories, what you're looking forward to most uh, from this episode. Let me know all that in the comments section down below. And of course, if you're going to enjoy the episode and you're looking forward to this episode, why not drop a like on the video to show that? As Eclipso takes aim at the Whitmore Dugans, Pat is reminded of painful memories from his past involving the original JSA and their fight to take down Eclipso. Meanwhile, Mike is forced to confront the guilt he feels for his role in high school's death and Barbara comes face to face with someone from her past. Finally, Courtney struggles to hold on to hope after Eclipso targets those around her. So yes, 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 yes. This is the big episode that was promoted before any other promotion for this season even started. This is the flashback JSA episode that will feature the first crossover between the Arrowverse and Stargirl, if you exclude that crisis cameo in like the, you know, towards the end, with us seeing John Wesley Shipp's Jay Garrick, or simply The Flash, interact with the JSA of Earth 2. Now, of course, Elephant in the Room, or Elephant in the Video, one of the two, there is no sign of the flashback scenes, or at least clearly no sign of the flashback scenes in the trailer at all. And I think there is a simple reason for that. They are key to not only this episode, but the season as a whole in the story. As the synopsis does say, Pat looks back at those painful memories or flashbacks and their original encounter and attempted takedown of Eclipso. They wouldn't want to spoil things. However, we do have promo images of these scenes, which give us some idea as to where things are headed in those flashback scenes. And that also hinted maybe what scene, there's I think there's one scene or one shot in this trailer that is part of the flashbacks. And based off what that, you know, that scene or, you know, shot is, it seems like this episode will have a lot going on, like so much. But we start off the trailer by seeing Barbara looking out of her window at work and seeing that the weather in Blue Valley is getting, uh, well, worse and just worse. Obviously, this indicating the rise in Eclipso's power and influence throughout the town. Of course, at the end of last episode, as I said earlier, we saw the window of her house frost over and uh, icicles, hint, hint, start to take form on the outside of the house. Now, who knows what it will be like when Eclipso is almost at full control and full power, like a hurricane? I got no idea. But one of the harder things that I think is going to be thrown at us in the final stretch of this season of Stargirl is what is real and what is fake or, you know, brought upon by Eclipso. And this trailer has a lot of those questions going on and I'm confused. Now, we do get to see Pat and Courtney noticing the storm as well and just that, like, nowhere in Blue Valley is safe anymore and really anyone that Eclipso wants to target and, I guess, infect with his darkness, he'll be able to get to, which does heighten the risk and the need to solve what's going on, just, you know, going on just, or just figure out, like, some sort of plan. Things are pretty stagnant right now with the JSA outside of Beth or Dr. Midnight, who could be a, a key very soon this season. But in regards to Pat... He seems to be targeted in the basement by someone with a gun and Courtney appears to be locked out of the basement but trying to get in and help. Now it is hard to see who is in there with Pat but they are shooting at him. Now I would assume just straight away it's a fear brought on by Eclipso so it could be someone that Pat felt that he let down in the past 
but it could also be someone that Eclipso is influencing and they are set on to Pat and you know they're imagining Pat as someone else. So this whole situation could be real to Pat. So if he gets shot, it's actually going to hurt. Now, if it's a fake thing that's going on in a vision, I would go straight to Icicle, but why would he shoot a gun? Wouldn't he just, you know, shoot Icicles and throw Icicles? But I don't know. If you have any thoughts, let me know in the comment section down below. Maybe, maybe I'm missing like a clear um, choice, but let me know if you have any thoughts. But yeah, I said Icicle before. So speaking of Icicle, that is who Barbara will be dealing with this week. And similar to Yolanda or Wildcat a couple of episodes ago that she did with Brainwave, it appears Barbara will be visited by the dead. Now we can see a hand come out of a coffin earlier in the trailer. It's a blue coffin. And honestly, it looks like a bit of a custom expensive coffin. So this could be Icicle coming out of it. Though last time we saw him, he was smashed to pieces by Mike. So I don't know if he would be like a full bodied corpse now. But if he is, I guess, depending on Eclipso's powers and how they want to represent them on the show, they could have it that he is brought back to life by Eclipso in this episode, or at least controlled in that way by Eclipso. So it might not be properly brought back to life, but Eclipso can control his body and make it seem like he's alive. But anyway, we see Barbara in her car getting very cold and the car surrounded by ice. Even us hearing Jordan Marquand or Icicle's voice saying, I'll haunt you and your family forever. So it's going to be more than just Barbara affected by Icicle in this episode by the looks of it, which maybe suggests that he is the one causing trouble with Pat and Courtney at the house as well, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, one thing that finishes off the trailer is actually Mike versus Cameron Marken. Now, I would be surprised if this is actually Cameron. Once again, it's most likely an Eclipso brought upon Vision because it just seems like Cameron has taken a 180 because he goes, no, no one in the house is going to survive. They're all going to die. But... I mean, you never know. Mike did kill his dad. The synopsis does talk about Mike sort of like facing the repercussions of that, if you want to call it. So maybe Cameron finds out whether it's through Eclipso or whether it's his grandmother telling him. His grandma has been sus this entire season. So maybe she finally tells him what happened and that Mike was the one that did it. I'm not too sure, but maybe Cameron does find that out and cracks and goes after Mike. Um, and maybe Eclipso helps him with that. So maybe it's a mix of the two, but we'll have to wait and see. But finally, from the trailer, the scene that connects to the flashbacks by the looks of it, in my opinion, and that is this person here being controlled by Eclipse for the first time. And this is Bruce Gordon, not the 10-year-old version we've been hanging out with, but the older version. And how do I know that? Well, he is wearing the exact same outfit that he had on in that photo from that book that talked about his adventures to Diablo Island, how he was the only one to return, he found all the islanders dead, everything like that. So we are going to see how Eclipso first came to be brought upon the modern world, thanks to Bruce Gordon and maybe his first interactions with the JSA of the past, or at least the key interactions, you know, that have led to, you know, Pat being so scared of him and knowing what he can do and potentially what the secret is. I do wonder if that secret that Pat's been keeping comes out in this episode. I think that might actually happen. But of course, all this flashback talk has to lead us into these primary images. So the first one, straight out of the gate, it's Jay Garrick. Not as the Flash, just Jay Garrick in a, you know, a suit. But unfortunately, they're at a graveyard. So of course, they are at a funeral. Now, it's just cool to see John Wesley's ship next to Luke Wilson. You know, Jay Garrick and Pat Dugan. I just think that's really cool. I just think it's awesome. Even if, even if this was the only prime image, it would get me excited. But there's many more. But next up, we do have another funeral picture. And that's actually Johnny Thunder and Sylvester Pemberton. Or, you know, Johnny Thunder or the one who had the Thunderbolt pen and Starman. Now... The thing with Starman, there are more promo images here, but his beard looks different here. Now, I don't know if that's meant to, if like the JSA broke up for a bit after the Eclipso thing. Um, even like sort of Pat in that first one sort of has like a bit of like some stubble going on. So I don't know if this, the JSA broke up for a bit for whatever happened after this funeral. But you might be wondering who's the funeral for? Is it for Wildcat? Is it for our man? Of course, it's not our man. We saw him die. Who's it for? This is... I don't, it's not a spoiler because we've known this person died, but um, you might be able to see it. Hopefully, if I zoom in, you might be able to sort of get a hint of it. I can tell from looking at the photo that this is the case, but the little uh, pamphlet thing, or whatever you want to call it, or the, yeah, I know the pamphlet thing, uh, that Starman or Sylvester Pemberton is holding says Rebecca. So that's Rebecca McNider or Dr. Midnight or Charles McNider's daughter, who we saw die. Uh, from the hands of Eclipso in episode one. So it seems like we might get a full circle from maybe the introduction to Eclipso in the present, in the, you know, in the past 
when he first came to, I guess, the modern world to where Rebecca McKnight dies. Then we get this funeral scene and maybe that's the end of it. Um, but then again, it's still, it sort of talks about their, you know, taking him down. So unless like maybe they take down Eclipso soon after he kills Rebecca McKnight, it'll be interesting to see what happens there and like the timeline of it all. But it seems this, that's the funeral they're attending here. But here we get to see Jay Garrick in his Flash suit. It's the same one from The Flash. I saw people going, oh my God, why didn't they give him a new one? I mean, we all knew it was going to be this suit. It was He was in one episode for this season and it was flashbacks that were going to be incorporated with another story. So they were never going to make him a new suit. I saw people saying, saying oh, it has to be skin tight. I'm like, they're not going to make a skin tight Flash suit for John Wesley ship. I mean, it's going to be this suit and this suit's cool. Why wouldn't you want this suit? So I'm fine with it. I saw people complaining. I know, I know it's the 21st century. People just complain for the sake of it because, you know, everyone just wants to complain, but... I like this. It actually sort of connects to the Arrowverse as well. So why wouldn't you want that? You get that. It's even another connection out of John, outside of John Wesley ship playing Jay Garrick, you get the actual suit that he wears in the Arrowverse. So it's an even stronger connection there. But this is a cool shot. It's the old Jay so lined up there. No Johnny Thunder, no Dr. Midnight. He's not there um, or some other people, but we get our man on the left, Jay Garrick or Flash, Starman, Wildcat, and then we have Stripesy or Pat Dugan there. Um, just, that's just awesome just to see them lined up there. I mean, that's just cool. That is just really cool. But it's going to be interesting to see what these flashbacks entail. Cause as I said, it seems to jump through maybe a couple of different time periods with them. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see how all of them work together. Of course, in last episode, we did see our man, star man, a wildcat around the table. Um, so yeah, here we get a good shot of our man. This is probably the best prime image that we've had of our man. Cause he's only been in like two episodes really as our man. So this is a cool shot of him. Then we do get Jay Garrick and Pat Dugan, uh, Dugan talking to Wildcat. They look very concerned though. So I wonder whether this is, this is like after the whole Rebecca McKnighter situation and that something bad has happened. And even next we have the, we have Starman here and he looks pretty concerned as well. So I think this is like, we have some bright times potentially with uh, the, the JSA lined up there before with like the red background going on, or like the lighter background, but then it seems a bit more dull and darker here. And I think that's, a sign that something bad has happened. So maybe after this, maybe these shots here with both Jay Garrick and Pat Dugan and Starman are after Rebecca McNighter has been killed potentially. But then this is an interesting one. We do have Sylvester Pemberton, not in his Starman get up, but just talking to Pat. And I do wonder where this is potentially when the JSA takes a break. Maybe they have, it's safe for them, for them not to be a team at the moment or something at this point. So maybe they too, do take a break. Um, once again, it's going to be interesting to see like the timeline of it all with these JSA flashbacks and us potentially learning what happened with the group back then and like what Eclipso did to them. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. And then the final two primary images are of the, I guess the stuff going on in the present day where we have Mike walking in and seeing Cameron there. Once again, who knows if this is real, fake, a mix of the two, we're not too sure. <laughs> the primary images don't give us a clearer idea um, of it at all. So we'll have to wait and see, but yeah, I think we're all excited for this flashback stuff, but I'm also curious to see what the present day um, story pushes forward with this Eclipso influence over the town. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome. We could drop a like on it to show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on all of this. And uh, if you're looking forward to this episode, let me know. And if you have any theories going forward, let me know as well. I'm always curious to read them. And if you're looking forward to Jay Garrick finally showing up. And um, yeah, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.